to Georgia for a year now, and uh, simply put, in a nutshell, what Mr. Secretary, the call between you and the President lasted 67 minutes, over an hour. Thing, uh, dead people, so dead people voted, and I think uh, the, the number is in the pro uh, close to 5,000 people, and they went to uh, obituaries, they went to uh, all sorts of methods to come up with an accurate number, and a minimum is close to about 5,000 voters. So, Secretary, did your office investigate whether those allegations were accurate? Did 5,000 dead people uh, in Georgia vote? Uh, no, it's not accurate. And actually, in their lawsuits, they allege 10,315 dead people. Uh, we found two dead people when I wrote my letter to Congress that stated January 6th, and subsequent to that, we found two more. That's one, two, three, four people, not 4,000, but just a total of four, not 10,000, not 5,000. Uh, the 2,236 and absentee ballots, I mean, they're, they're all exact numbers that were, were done by accounting firms, law firms, etc. And even if you cut them in half, cut them in half, and cut them in half again, it's more votes than we need. Mr. Secretary, is there any way that you could have lawfully changed the result in the state of Georgia and somehow explained it away as a recalculation? No, the numbers are the numbers. The numbers don't lie. We had many allegations, and we investigated every single one of them. In fact, I challenged my team, did we miss anything? They said that there was over 66,000 underage voters. We found that there was actually zero. You can register to vote in Georgia. When you're 17 and a half, you have to be 18 by Election Day. We checked that out, every single voter. They said that there was 2,423 non-registered voters. There was zero. They said that there was 2,056 felons. We identified less than 74 or less that were actually still in felony sentence. Every single allegation we checked, we ran down the rabbit trail to make sure that our numbers were accurate. There's no way you could have recalculated it except uh, by fudging the numbers. The numbers were the numbers, and we could not recalculate because we had made sure that we had checked every single allegation. And we had many investigations. We had nearly 300 from the 2020 election. It's simple. And, uh, and everyone's going to look very good if the truth comes out. It's okay. It takes a little while. But let the truth come out. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. Was the president here asking you for exactly what he wanted, one more vote than his opponent? What I knew is that we didn't have any votes to find. We had continued to look. Uh, we investigated, like I just shared the numbers with you. There were no votes to find. That was an accurate count that had been certified. And as our general counsel said, there was no shredding of ballots. After making this request, the president then goes back to the danger of having you deny these allegations of fraud. Well, after the, ele after the election, uh, my email, my cell phone was doxxed, and so I was getting texts all over the country, and then eventually my wife started getting the uh, text, and hers typically came in as sexualized uh, texts, which were disgusting. You have to understand that uh, Trish and I, we met in high school, and we've been married over 40 years now, and so um, they started going after her, I think, just to probably put pressure on me, why don't you just quit, walk away, and so that happened. And then some people broke into my daughter-in-law's uh, home, and uh, my son has passed, and she's a widow, and uh, she has two kids, and so we're very concerned about her safety also. And Mr. Secretary, why didn't you just quit and walk away? Because I knew that we had followed the law, and we had followed the Constitution, and I think sometimes moments require you to stand up and, and just take the shots when you're doing your job, and that's all we did. You know, we just followed the law and we followed the Constitution. And at the end of the day, President Trump came up short. But I had to be faithful to the Constitution. And that's what I swore I know to do. During the remainder of the call, the former president continued to press you to find the remaining votes. That